We're close to the end of a full day of hunting on the Lucasia Ranch in the Porcupine Hills of southwestern Alberta. I can already say, quite honestly, this is one of the most optics intensive hunts I've ever been on. I'm after mule deer. We're literally out in these hills trying to spot deer as far as a mile or even two miles away. That's a long, long ways for such a small animal. Once we do spot them, we're trying to put antlers on them and judge the antlers to see if they're worth getting cl a closer look at, saving us miles and miles and miles of walking. To do that, you have to have good optics. My guide, Brett Lucas, told me that he has a lot of hunters ask him, ah, do I even need to bring my binoculars along? I can't believe that question. No matter where I go hunting and what kind of cover I go hunting in, I feel naked without a pair of binoculars on my chest, and especially here in country like this. To come up here without binoculars, I would be bored out of my mind because I'd be counting on the guide to spot everything, to look at everything, and to tell me whether it was worth getting closer to. Having a good set of binoculars, 10 by 40s or 10 by 42s like these, makes the hunt. Don't even think about coming to a big, wide open country hunt like this without a good set of binoculars. But when you're looking at animals this far away and trying to judge racks, binoculars are just the start. I bring along a good spotting scope too. This is what you use once you've seen the animals. You think something's a buck, but you're not sure. Put, on the, put the spotting scope on the tripod and have a good look. This is where you do most of your long distance judging. Sometimes, even on a really good buck, because the horns tend to be light colored and blend in so perfectly with this grass background, until you get the spotting scope on them, you really don't know what you're looking at. And even then, you gotta study them a while Wait for that buck to turn and give you a good 360 view of his antlers. So start with the binoculars and move to the spotting scope. That's going to tell you, do we go after this animal? Once you make that decision, you still use your binoculars to judge the situation and plan the stalk. Once you start your stalk and start getting closer to the animal, a good laser rangefinder comes into play. Unless you live out here and practice it every single day, judging distance in this wide open country can be very, very deceiving. The rangefinder will tell you exactly what you're dealing with and can plan your shot. Okay. Rangefinder technology has come a long, long way in a very short time. This particular model of Nikon 1200 is accurate to within one meter out to 12 hundred meters. Unbelievable technology in such a small package and incredibly useful, especially when you're lining up a long shot. The final piece of optical equipment that you'll want to have is a good rifle scope. Out here, two and a half to ten or even a twelve power scope is none too much because you could be making a shot in excess of 400 yards if the situation warrants and you feel confident in your ability to make that shot. This particular Nikon has a BDC reticle, which is for bullet drop compensation. It's got additional reticle circles in it that you can sight in at 200, 300, 400, even 500 yards. With this 300 wind mag, it's perfectly capable of making those shots if you are. But out of, out of all four pieces of equipment, I would say the scope is probably the least important, believe it or not, simply because until you spot the animals and judge the animals, you can't make the shot. So you've got to have the first pieces before the scope comes into play.